Hey everyone, Happy New Year, an absolute fantastic 2018 to come, so I'm really looking forward to seeing how everyone goes. Um, you know, absolutely, we'd love to hear from you about with your goals, uh, you know, and accountability buddy is going to be so important in keeping accountable for what you want to achieve. So, you know, in this group, I've been trying to volunteer to be an accountability buddy in case you want to have someone by your side to know that you are actually getting it done. So I'd love to hear from you to make sure that you can hear me all right, because uh, I'm running this obviously in my living room. Uh, that's actually Winton, the, uh, the house mascot. <laughs> um, I'm realizing that with doing things like this, I'm going to need to start investing in say like cameras and things like that, because a lot of what I do is actually running my business through my phone. So in a case like this, opposed to the podcast where I'm sitting down, I've got headphones. This is more of a, um, a uh, you know, a bit of a distance between us. So I just want to make sure that you can hear me okay. So um, thanks for tuning in. I really appreciate you investing your time uh, with me here today. If you can hear me okay, please let me know in the comments below because at the moment I want to make sure that it's not too quiet for you. Uh, because if it is, then, you know, I'll just obviously quickly change the setting in regards to perhaps sitting down, putting in my headphones, but I want to make sure that you can hear it. Um, sounds great. Awesome. All right, Rob, thanks for that, man. So with today, you know, I really just want to cover so many things in regards to how, as a community, we've grown this group um, because I did a post a little while ago about a week or so before Christmas and I said, I'd love to hit 500 by New Year's. And guess what? Today we've hit 620. So in, you know, I our projections have smashed them. So thank you so much for all of your engagement. Thank you so much for actually being a part of this fantastic community. Uh, I'm really looking forward to seeing where it come, where where it goes, really. So you know, it's absolutely fantastic. So um, yeah, the fact I, I'm doing this in my living room, I realise that with the whiteboard, it's a bit hard to see. So I'm just going to be spitballing here. Just the fact that I need to invest in some cameras with the podcast that I've been doing, the online footprint project. That's got some massive things coming this year. So I've almost fully booked out January. So that's something that's going to be massive. So that in itself is almost 25 hours logged for a podcast just for January. So stay tuned for that. And that's just a side hustle. You know, that's something I do on the side. I actually build websites uh, as my full-time income, but then the On My Footprint Project podcast is really just something as a bit of a, you know, a network growth uh, hack, I guess. And it's something that I've been enjoying doing because I'm meeting new people every single day. And I think that's one thing that you really want to be doing there is, is just growing your network as much as possible. So I'm really looking forward to hearing how everyone's uh, goals are tracking along for 2018. And uh, I think one thing that's going to really help in leveraging, increasing your goals is, is more contribution not only to say this group, but if you've got a group as well and, and leveraging that to then grow your network. Because when you do start out a Facebook group, you really want to know why you're doing it. I mean, I'll be honest, you know, I'm no expert in, in group, group growth and I've only had this group about two months. Um, I started beginning November, it's now January. So, you know, in two months we've hit 620 people, which is a fantastic effort. So thank you so much for your contribution. But it's more about figuring out why you want the group. Now, I'm, I certainly started it just for the reason I wanted to grow my network. I left full-time work earlier this year. I didn't have a huge network, and so I wanted to figure out how I can do that. So I thought, uh, you know, group growth is going to be one way in growing that. So John just say, through which medium has your network grown the most, through social media or face-to-face -face interaction? Fantastic question, John. So with that, um, basically what I'm going to do, I'm going to write that down and we're going to get to that because that is a fantastic question. So what I'll do is just um, face to face uh, or online. So yeah, John, thank you for the question. You know, and, and it is a great question. And really it's a case of I started growing my network earlier this year because I left full-time employment and I build websites. So I figured, well, from me, what I can do is by having a US-based network, I can do the exact same amount of work but offer a competitive advantage because the US dollar is 30% stronger than the Australian dollar. So I'm doing the same work, but I can offer a more competitive advantage and offer a cheaper rate and still blow the competition out of the water. So I've been trying to grow my US network more than anything. Um, so to touch base on your question now, John, before we go into too much detail on it later, it's all been through social media. So it hasn't been any face-to-face. -face. I certainly have had coffees with uh, clients here in Adelaide, but it makes more sense for me to have an online coffee or a Skype call uh, through you know, the internet so I can use uh, basically Facebook or Skype or whatever else to then have 30% more for the same work. So yeah, it's all been through face-to-face. Uh, so yeah, really it's something that I've been trying to grow as much as possible. And I think a network through groups is going to be a fantastic way to interact and, and keep everyone in mind because if there's something, you know, a service that you offer 
within this group, well then we all know about it because you know, you, you're constantly active, you're constantly saying hello. If someone asks a question, you're answering that question for them so that everyone's remembering, oh hey, um, you know, um, Bill is you know, the, the computer guy or, or you know, Sarah is the, um, you know, the, the personal brand consultant. So we all know to network through each other. So I think that's gonna be a really fantastic thing to, to leverage a, a group for. So you know, big things to come this year. The, the podcast itself is something that I've been using within this group to grow it. And I think that's been working really well. The feedback's been fantastic. But I'd love to know your feedback on this video as well because this is the first live training we've actually done within this group. Uh, as you can see, you know, a bit of a bit of a um, you know half setup. Just the fact that I'd like to run my business predominantly through my phone. Um, but yeah, with things like this, if you are getting value from this, and I'm definitely going to have to invest in you know proper camera, video setup, that sort of thing because it's about. Hey Chuck, thanks for tuning in, man. Because it's about when you do offer value, you want to make sure that that value is being received because. If you're offering, you know, just noise and it's not being taken in, well, then you're better off investing your time in helping others in a different way. So, you know, with the podcast, for instance, I'm always asking, are you enjoying the podcast? Because I want to make sure that people are actually listening to it. Because if they're not, I can much rather spend, say, an hour of my day helping in other ways, whether it's blog posts that you'll read or doing, say, live videos like this, trainings. So it's about whenever you do offer value, make sure that the audience is, you know, receptive to it because you can you really want to make sure that you're doing the right thing for your audience so yeah i'd absolutely love to hear how this goes um this is a first for me as well so as i said i'm no expert in growing groups but i've had the group two months now and we just hit 620 people so it's something that you know if this goes well i'm absolutely going to keep doing um live uh, seminars like this just to try and offer increased value in addition to the podcast so yeah it's something that i'm really looking forward to so let's Rob says, yeah, camera will take you to the next level as Facebook flips the viewpoint. And if you wrote stuff down, can't read it. Yeah, I agree, Rob. I noticed that as soon as I hit live, I was like, fuck. <laughs> but you know, that, that's it. It's about testing the waters. And I do mention later, test what works. So it really is about just figuring out what works for you and what you can do to, to further increase what you're doing and leverage that even further. So you know, to, to get off with the group training, you really want to start off with what's your why? Why have you started a group or why are you intending on starting a group? Is it to grow your network? Is it to promote a business? Is it to build your personal brand? Um, it really is whatever you know you want to do for. So for myself, the fact, um, yeah, as I was saying before, I'm based in Australia and I build websites. So in the US, the dollar is 30% stronger. So for me to build a network, and I'm offering value to others by building them sites, I'm getting 30% more for doing the same work. So it would make much more sense for me to do that because it's about working smarter, not harder. If you do both, work smarter and harder, you're absolutely going to smash it. Like you're going to do fantastically. 2018 is going to be your year. But if you're going to do one or the other, work smart. But as I said, do both, work hard and work smart. But you know, it's a case of, well, if I'm offering 30% more, or getting 30% more for the same work, then it makes more sense. So I've, I've created this group purely to network, so that way if anyone knows of anyone that doesn't need a website, because I offer 35% referral commissions, so I think that that in itself is great for an affiliate program. So I've had quite a few people bring me leads, and then they're getting cash in hand when the sale goes through. So networks, for me, is a fantastic reason to have a group. Whereas if you've got, say, a personal brand, and you wanna grow that personal brand, networks, um, you know, fantastic for that, but it brings them back into the group again, because using that group, ultimately it's about networking. No matter what you wanna do, a group is fantastic for networking. If you want to promote a business or a brand, you need to build that network first because I've seen quite a few groups where they've started and they can't even hit that 100 person point and then you go through their content and it's because they're not offering value. It's all about, well, you know, me, 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 what, what can I offer to you So, uh, in regards to business? So it's not really something that you really want to be doing, especially earlier on. I mean, later on, absolutely, you know, ask as much as you want, but in the beginning, if you're just saying, oh, you know, here's a course I'm selling and you haven't done any other posts in regards to offering value to your network, no one's going to be interested because you really want a large group that is engaging and you'll trust each other and you'll know each other quite well. Uh, and it's almost like building a, a family, you know, it's a community online that, you know, a space that you've all created to, to help one another. So, you know, for myself, it was purely about networking. 
Uh, with this podcast, The Online Footprint Project, I'm gonna be monetizing that soon through sponsorships and things like that. So I have no intentions in the near future of trying to you know, monetize from this group at all because I'm really enjoying just offering the value. And if I can get money through other means such as the podcast, then you know that's great. And then that way I'm not asking anyone for anything in return. So I'm really looking forward to that. As I was saying before, we've almost fully booked uh, January for the podcast. So it's almost 25 hours is gonna be logged just for January alone for a podcast, which is pretty big. So, you know, a lot of people have been keen to put their hand up. If you are keen to be on the Online Footprint Project podcast, uh, my email is ross at rossmcfarland.com or just send me a Facebook message either way. Uh, but I'm really looking forward to, uh, you know, what's to come 2018. So let's start off with group etiquette. When you've just started your group, obviously you want to try and get as many people in the group as possible. But there's different ways of going about it because with myself, you know, it's all trial and error. Like I've only had the group about two months. I'm um, just taking off my flip-flops there, my, my thongs. Uh, so I'm currently shoeless. <laughs> but I'm on carpet, so I figured it would be much more comfortable. So, you know, it's about really figuring out how you're going to get that first 100 people because, hey, Andrew, thanks for tuning in, man. So the first 100 is such a massive milestone because it's a psychological milestone that 100 people have said, yes, we want to work together. We want to join something you've created. And that itself is massive. Like when you're starting out in a business and you get your first sale, that is a momentous um, milestone because someone's actually been willing to pay for your service. So it's something that in a group perspective, if you can get 100 people to say yes, as much as it's free to join a group, 100 people as a collective is a large group of people. You know, you try and get them all in one room like it's not possible. You know, if you had 100 people in a house, that's a full house. So, you know, to really try and get as many people as possible in, then you really want to try and do that as as quickly as possible, but there's different ways of doing it. You don't want to be douchey when doing it because for myself, you know, I had no idea about group and group growth when I first started this back in November. So it was purely about testing the waters because in any stage of any business, you really want to test, rinse and repeat and whatever does work, scale that upwards. So when I did first start out growing or starting this group, the first 100 was quite a challenge. But you know, the reason I bring up this first 100 was because I had a fantastic question from uh, Alex Edgar and it was, what did I do to get from zero to 100 members? And I didn't have a big network. You know, I've only just left full-time work a few months ago, so I was really starting fresh. So I actually, I've basically just been hustling as hard as possible. And I mean, sure, you know, you say hustle, it's, you know, it's a bit of a, a trend word at the moment, that sort of thing, but the reality is, Use the you know the synonym of it however you want. You've got to work hard, and that absolutely comes down to it. Working hard is going to get you your first hundred people within a group. Now we're doing it in different ways. There's you know there's douchey ways of doing it, and then there's what you if you want to call it a clean way or a friendly way of doing it. A really test it. So when you first make a group, it asks you to at least add one person. So uh, you know I added one of my best friends just because I knew he wouldn't care, and I needed someone to get started. So I've only added a handful of people. Uh, myself, but what I started doing was testing it in different ways. I was promoting, and we'll get into that further, but I was adding a few different ways to do it in regards to just adding them cold. And it is kind of a douchey way to do it, but I didn't realize that there was such a thing as group etiquette. So, you know, one of my friends, Jess, she said, Oh, hey, I hope you don't mind. I added you to my group. And I was like, Yeah, absolutely. Like, that's great. Like, you know, I'd love to be a part of your group. So thank you for adding me to that. And I had absolutely no qualms with being added into her group cold because, you know, we've got that rapport and that relationship of, you know, friendship. And I was more than happy to. But if it's someone that I don't know and they're just adding me and we've just become friends, we've only had, say, three or four messages because we've just networked today or yesterday, and then they add me to their group, it's gonna be quite hard to do so. Now, Andrew's asked, would you recommend growing via paid promotion? Andrew, that's a great question. We will cover that later. Um, so yeah, absolutely, man. What I'll do, I'll write it up here so we can cover that. So thank you for the live question. Um, so I'll go paid, question mark. To quickly touch base on it, I haven't spent a cent on growing this group to 620 people within two months, but I have been researching how to leverage paying to grow it quicker and further. So yeah, the, the question was there from Andrew is would you recommend growing by a paid promotion? I would say I would recommend it, although I haven't done it yet. I've been looking into it because I haven't spent a cent yet, but I do intend on doing so because I wanna not only grow this group and network, but I wanna grow the podcast further, the online footprint project podcast, because that's what I'm gonna to do to actually monetize 
through this group. So that way I'm not asking anything of the members here. I'm also getting businesses to pay to sponsor the, the podcast itself. So that way they get advertising and it's only a 10 or 15 second you know, promotion at the beginning saying, oh, this podcast is brought to you by X person or X business. So that's why it's one way I can monetize through the group without actually asking anything from you guys. So yeah, I definitely would recommend uh, investing money in growing the group, but I haven't yet, so I'm looking into how to do that further. So, you know, I'm certainly no expert on growing groups, so if anyone knows how to invest money into growing a group, we'd love to hear from you, because that's what this community is about. It's about helping one another to grow, you know, not only as people, but as business people. So, it's something that, you know, we all just want to give and take and, and, you know, give back as much as we can so we can actually grow and learn from one another. And, and that's one of the real reasons I started this group was to network, but then also learn from others. So, you know, it's definitely something that, um, you know, I think is a great idea. So, you know, with adding people to the group, adding them cold is, is not really, it only happened once where I was adding people cold and I didn't, the stream cut out on my internet. <laughs> All right, Andrew, well, I was basically just saying that I haven't spent a cent on growing this group to 620 people within two months, but I have been looking in how to monetize or invest money in that, so I definitely would recommend doing it. Amanda says, for paid growth, I think that might be running ads on your Facebook page to pitch to the group. Definitely, so with running ads, you can't actually send a Facebook link in there, so maybe use like Bitly or something like that, but you can certainly run it through your page and then bring people to your page and then as a funnel, promote your group, or if you're using a Bitly URL, you can then do it that way. So I hope that touches base on it a little bit. We will answer it later as I've written up from the board. Um, but yeah, so I had one person where I chatted to them about two or three messages and then I added them to the group and um, they they were a little irate. I mean, they, they certainly weren't rude, but they basically were just a bit passive aggressive about it. And I realized, oh, okay, you know, I'm new to making groups. So I didn't realize that there was a bit of an etiquette behind that and that, you know, some may take it the wrong way in, in regards to being added to a group. So since that, I basically took that as feedback and then I decided, okay, well, I'm not going to just randomly add people anymore. Um, because it's a case of if you are going to randomly add people that may not necessarily appreciate that as such. Amanda says, if you use a separate landing page, you can also trigger Facebook pixel, retarget people later. Awesome advice, Amanda. That's, that's fantastic. Thank you so much for that. I think a lot of people will get value from that. Um, so yeah, with, with adding people, I'll speak to a lot of people every day and it does take time. It does take hustle. As I said, you know, use whatever synonym you want, but you've got to work hard. So the fact that I'm very new to growing my network, it's only been a few months since I've left full-time work. I'll easily speak to 20, 30 people, new people a day through Facebook. Um, and from that, you know, I'll message them and say, hey, you know, great to meet you. What's your story? What's your business? But at the same time, I do genuinely care, like, you know, who these people are I'm meeting, like, see if there's anything that we can, you know, symbiotically work together in, uh, whether it's, say, someone that has an ad agency and if they ever get leads for web design, well, I can help in that regard. Or if I'm ever getting, um, you know, leads for uh, ads and I can, you know, palm it to them. So it's about figuring out how to, you know, how to work it out. Uh, Frank says, after Ron Ross, I'll be sure to catch a replay. Frank, thanks so much for tuning in, at least investing your time. Uh, I look forward to hearing your comments later about what you thought of the video. Kenneth says, love the shirt. Thanks, man. <laughs> yeah, we, we, we were all joking about this the other day where, uh, you know, being a guy, I only have like a handful of shirts. <laughs> so, you know, they just get rotated pretty regularly. So I guess pretty soon I probably should invest in more shirts, especially that January with the podcast room was fully booked for January. So unless you want to see the same four or five shirts, you know, rotated every day, <laughs> I should probably invest it a little bit more. But uh, yeah, so in regards to the, um, you know, adding people to the group, that's probably... I'd say it's kind of a, a douchey way to do it. And it was more just a case of I figured it out very quickly and that I was adding people and then one person was a little passive aggressive. They weren't super rude or anything. Uh, I can completely appreciate why they were passive aggressive about it. And I realized that, okay, well there is group etiquette, so I better not do that anymore. Because typically when it comes to uh, feedback through a business, using one person's feedback isn't enough to pivot your business or change what you're doing. And I would usually say, you know, it's really not enough. Um, super helpful, uh, real quick, do you see magic wand in the corner of your screen? Uh, no, Amanda, I don't, on my, f oh, actually, yeah, I do. Um, well, I'd love to know, what's the, uh, the magic wand? Let me know. <laughs> so, yeah, I mean, when it comes to business, click magic wand and then the tools icon, there should be an option called horizontal flip, then we can read your whiteboard. Oh, okay, no, thank you, I didn't even realize that. Um, Let's have a look, horizontal flip. Um, 
All right, so all I'm getting with the magic wand is just different um, different emojis. So yeah, unfortunately, I'm not getting a magic wand on that unless I've pressed the wrong thing. Um, yeah, all right, look, what we'll do, because the whiteboard, because I can see anyway, the whiteboard isn't really easy to read. So afterwards, what I'll do is in the comments, I'll actually put all these points in the comments so that way you can see what it is. So Amanda, I appreciate you trying to help out in regards to that, the tools button, I think is the last one. Um, Nah, so unfortunately, I don't have the camera there. No. Nah. <laughs> no, nah, all right. What I'll have to do is with the whiteboard, I'll just write it all in the comments later so that way you can see it all because it's really just talking points in regards to headings and titles, um, but I can certainly um, yeah, mention all that uh, later in the comments. So, yeah, thanks for trying to help me out and help everyone out in the group so they can see the, um, the actual whiteboard itself. Um, Cause yeah, on my end, I can I'm getting a full view, so I can see the the whiteboard as well. But it's quite difficult to read, so I do need to invest in video at some point. Um, but yeah, when you do start your own business, or when you're in a business, you know, using one person's feedback is not enough to change what you're doing or pivot. But in this case, because it was something I was so new to, and someone was a little you know passive aggressive about me adding to their group, I realized, oh okay, well you know, in this case, I think it's something that. Um, Sorry, John, I like to open to learning and new ideas. Just your narrative and willingness to mess with the wine speaks of your brand. Thanks, John, I appreciate that. And I appreciate you commenting and tuning in. Like, I really do appreciate everyone's time that's investing with me today. Like, I really, I respect your time at just as much as I respect mine. So I wanna try and make this as valuable as possible. So, you know, I really do appreciate you all being with me here today. Uh, even if you're on the replay, you know, I'd love to hear from you, hashtag Team Arlet after replay, just so I know at a later date, you did get some value from this. So that way I know to invest my time in making more videos like this just because I don't wanna waste your time and if I know you're gonna get better value out of me doing something different, like for instance, um, writing more blog posts or something like that, then I'm more willing to do that. But if I know you're getting value from the videos, then I'm gonna absolutely keep going with them. So yeah, thank you so much. So yeah, really it was a case of when I first got started, that first 100 people, it was just about networking like every day I'm, and I still do it now I'm speaking to 20 30 people sometimes more sometimes less it depends on the day I mean it, it's hard to do that you know it takes up a lot of time but I predominantly run my business through my phone so from that I really just because I'm always on my phone I'm always getting notifications and things like that then it's always a case of well yep I can network through Facebook and through the internet so I'm going to just try and find people that are keen for my group so I found the biggest place to find group members was from other groups. Now, in saying that, it's once again, it comes back to networking, making sure they're the right group for you and then the right people for you. Because I'm, I think one thing that's worked so well for me is I'm genuinely interested in, in everyone that I say hello to. Um, you know, I'll see comments and it looks like an interesting comment or a thought provoking comment. So I'll absolutely be like, yeah, hey, you know, I saw you comment, you know, I'd love to know more about you. Whereas if it's someone that I've seen something and I don't really agree with what they've said, I'm not gonna reach out to them because I don't want that kind of negativity you know, around my space. So, you know, n groups are a fantastic way to find group members. And I know it makes sense because they're already in groups, but if you're finding huge groups, they may wanna stay in their particular group because, you know, it's already such an engaging group. So it's not about taking away group members from other groups. It's about just sharing the attention because there's different groups you can go and there's some fantastic groups that I'm a part of and, you know, there's some amazing people that, you know, I've become friends with uh, through the internet. Uh, because you you are you they say that you're the best you're the five people you hang around with the most so if you are spending a lot of time on the internet then it doesn't necessarily have to mean that you're physically with five other other people it's more so that say online maybe it's five people that you chat to every day or you know every few days and that in itself can help curb who you are it can help basically just support you and then get you going in whatever direction you want to go so you know if you need to be around five people that are winning doesn't have to be physically, you know, it can be on the internet. So it's whatever you gotta do. So I'll use groups to find other people to add to my group. But at first I'll make sure that they're the right fit and I'm always saying hello and learning more about everyone else. And the fact that I genuinely want to know about these people, I think that's been a really big marker in regards to growing this group so quickly. So, you know, if, if I haven't said hello to you, um, you know, it's, it's I haven't purposely done that. It's more just a case of, you know, running out of time and things like that and or missing messages because you know, I'm getting more and more notifications every single day, so it's actually hard to keep track of every single one. So if you left a comment for me or something like that and I haven't responded, my apologies. It's either I haven't gotten to it yet or I've missed it, and it's purely just because of the sheer number of, of uh, notifications that are starting to come through every day. Because 
uh, you can imagine, you know, if I'm chatting to 20 or 30 people every day, plus having a group of 600 plus people, it's gonna be quite difficult and challenging to do that. So when you do start growing your group, it's great to have admins in there to, to check on your group itself. Uh, Amanda says, all my successful friends are online. Exactly, you know, I'm the same. So, you know, Amanda, I, I love hearing from you. It's, I really appreciate it. Um, and, you know, Amanda's, for instance, you know, one of my online friends. We, we chat semi-regularly and I always love hearing from her and how things are going. So, you know, you don't have to have friends physically that are doing well. I mean, it's great, but, you know, if, if you want to, if you're unable to do so and you've got really good friends, but you want to leverage online friends, then absolutely do it. So, yeah, the first 100, if you can get to that, that'll be fantastic because once you've hit the 100, you're going to keep going. So I'll utilize groups predominantly to get that. And that's what I did for my first 100. I went through my network. I didn't just start adding heaps of random people. Um, I only have people that I've physically met. I reckon I could count on one hand that I've got within my group. So for 620 people, you can see there that I didn't have a super large network. It's not like I started the group and then hit just, yep, I've, I've launched and then all these people are joining. So, you know, you don't have to have such a big network to start your group. So that's really something that I you know, recommend is just doing a bit of research, finding other groups of like-minded people. And then from there, you can, in essence, get them to, you know, join if you want. Because I'll chat, you know, a few messages, maybe three, four, five messages, and they'll say, hey, uh, you know, I'd love for you to join my group. Uh, I'd love to invite you because, you know, people love to be invited to things. Um, uh, what I started doing the first few weeks is, you know, I'd maybe just send them one message and say, hey, I saw your comment thought that was you know really interesting would you be interested in joining my group i'd like to invite you and then it started i became more interested in the people around me so then it became well two messages hey how are you and then from there would you like to join the group and now that i'm you know growing much more open to, to learning more about others it's getting even further so you know it might be three or four messages in that i'll say hey you know i've got a group i'd love to invite you to it um, and it kind of goes from there so you know really just figure out what works for you but for me i found that group invites from other groups worked best um, you know for that first hundred so then let's have a look next so yeah group etiquette and where to promote so you know with promotions it's a little different than networking because with networking it's individual and you're you know learning about the person and, and you want them to join your group whereas with promoting it's more of like a a shotgun approach where you're putting it out there and then others can organically see it so promotion can be uh, quite good uh, in regards to growing a group, but it's about figuring out where you want to promote your group because if you're promoting in certain avenues, they might work well for you and your goals and the goals for your group, but they might work really poorly. So one example for me for a poorly promoted um, platform is Facebook groups that are just for promoting your business. So there's a lot out there, you know, they're called like advertise your business or market your business or whatever else. And you go in there and it's just everyone is just posting their own businesses, you know, their own links. Uh, if you want to call it spam, you know, however you want to word it. And in essence, that's great in regards to they've got, you know, 40, 50, 60,000 people in their group because everyone wants to promote their business. But unfortunately, when it's something like this group here, the NEC group, because we want such a highly engaged community that actually help each other and share, it's not all about, you know, take, take, take. Then for me, promoting in groups like that wasn't feasible because I would post on there saying, oh, hey, you know, I'm not actually selling anything, I have a business, but if you want to network and, you know, grow your business more, then here's a link to my Facebook group, the Niche Entrepreneur Community Group, the NEC. And I would do that and sure, I would get people joining, but then I'd also check my, um, you know, pending posts and heaps of it would just be spam in regards to people's businesses. They wouldn't say hello, they wouldn't offer any value, they would just post their business. So from there, I would delete the post and I would ban them from the group because we don't want spammers. You know, this is a spam-free group and I think that if you have a spam-free group, if that's what you want, then that's gonna work really well in regards to keeping it, you know, at feel like a, a proper community, whereas if it's all just give, 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 uh, and just spitting out just, or take, 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 I should say, in regards to giving links on your business, it's, it's not gonna be helpful. So, you know, if you want a platform or a group where it's all about just people promoting their own businesses, awesome, you know, they work really well, but just that's not for me. So, you know, I found quite quickly that promoting in those types of groups weren't necessarily the best for my goals. Um, and when you do have your group, having it as uh, only, you say, admins or, you know, the, uh, you know, the owner of the group, or whatever, can, uh, approved posts, I would absolutely recommend that because then from day one, you're going to be able to basically just limit who posts. And, and I say limit not in regards to 
you know, being like, um, you know, saying, oh, who can and who can't. It's more just a case of to prevent spam posts because spam posts really don't work well because a lot of groups that I'll have a look at because, you know, a few friends will say, hey, you can look at my group and that sort of thing. I'll notice that they may not have hit the 100 or the 200 group person mark, but they've got a lot of link posts in regards to their own services or, uh, you know, spam as such. And it's not really something that is engaging. You know, you want questions that actually engage the audience. You want things that offer value to the audience. So to really just post your business isn't going to work well. So that's really something I'd recommend is just, you know, have a look at what you're posting. So um, let's see, test what works in engagement. So engagement is after you get people to the group, engagement is one of the biggest things that you can do to grow your group further. Because with engagement, whether it's comments or people posting, um, or you know, doing videos, engagement is gonna be the biggest thing for the Facebook algorithms to share your group and to share your content further because Facebook is all about um, user-friendly you know, services. So it's a case of if you have someone within your group uh, and they've done a fantastic post and you're all commenting on it, it's gonna then pop up in their newsfeed or pop up elsewhere saying, well, you know, X person commented on X post and then others are gonna see it and then they're gonna to wanna to join the group as well or they're gonna to comment too. So it's a case of if you can get engagement, then that's fantastic. So, you know, sometimes you'll see, um, like with the new Facebook algorithms, they've tried to reduce clickbait because that's not friendly, um, you know, usability for, for everyone. So it'll say, oh, you know, comment below or tag a friend, you know, that, um, you know, likes eggs and has to look at a picture of an egg and then it's just all these people just be tagging it. So no one really likes those kind of clickbait type scenarios. So from that, uh, yeah, Facebook have really reduced the organic views of those type posts. So if you ever put in a post and it's got the words say comment below or we'll tag a friend, it's not gonna get viewed as much as it should. So one little hack for that is what I've been doing is I'll say mention and then I'll put a little um, emoji arrow pointing down. So as in I'm saying, you know, comment below, but it's mention down. So a little hack there, I don't think anyone else is doing that. So that's something unique that I just kind of figured out. Um, so same sort of thing as clickbait, but at the same time, it's because I've offered a post with value in it that I've then said, okay, well, I'd love to hear from you below about you know X, Y, and Z, whether it's I want to know that you're getting value from this or if you have any live questions from the videos or the podcast for our guests that are on, um, or you know I did a post an hour ago just saying, uh, you know, we're going live in an hour for group growth. I'd love to hear from you, you know, comment below or, or mention down <laughs> in that, you know, you're going to be in because, uh, you know, I've written down a lot of questions I've already had over the last few weeks in regards to group growth. So I'm certainly going to cover all those today. Uh, and then, you know, as, as we go, you know, any live questions that come up, I've been running them on the board as well. Um, so, you know, in regards to testing what works in engagement, it's really just a matter of figuring out what works best for the most amount of views and the most amount of comments and, um, you know, the most amount of just the growing the ecosystem as such. So when um, when you're doing posts that have external links, so let's just say it's a post and it's got your Instagram link or uh, it's got to a blog, the Facebook algorithms have set or changed this year that they don't want you going off of Facebook. They wanna keep everyone on the platform as much as possible. So because of that, Basically, if you do put a blog post on your, um, you know, your Facebook personal wall or your business page or within a group, organically, it's not going to get viewed as much. So what you really want to do is if you're going to make a post with a link, do the post and then in the comment section, put the link or do the post, get a lot of people to see it. And then later on, then edit the post to then put the link in because that's kind of a way to hack the, uh, the algorithms as such. Because if you're putting posts on your group wall or your business page wall or even your personal wall that you want eyes to see it, putting links off of Facebook isn't going to do you any justice. So, you know, that's something I'd really recommend. Now, that's, you know, and that comes down to testing the waters as well. It's not only just about well, what, you know, everyone said about the Facebook algorithms. It's also about testing what works for you. So for myself personally, I found that with posting pictures hasn't really worked that well in regards to engagement. Same with GIFs. So if I have something written like a blog post, uh, and I'm offering value to others. I found that works really well in regards to you know getting people commenting and asking questions. But if I do a blog post and then I put a GIF or an image, I find it tends to reduce the organic views. So you know it may be a case of figuring out what works best for you. I mean, if you've got a Facebook group and it's all about images of your dog, different story. You know that's obviously going to work really well for your group and your goals or your business page. But if it is about you know say this group here, it's the niche uh, entrepreneurial community 
the reason I've made it the niche entrepreneurial community is because everyone's in their own certain niche. So this is more of a, a um, an ecosystem and a community and a family where everyone can help one another in their own businesses. So it's not specific for say, e-commerce or it's not specific for Facebook ads. It's more of a general group that we can all help and learn little bits from each industry from one another. So that's really something that I've been testing and I think that's really been working well for me because I'm really quite a curious person so I like to learn as much as I can from all different um, you know, aspects and avenues of, of different industries. So although I've got my own industry that I work in and I can certainly offer value from that, I'm still curious about different things. Um, you know, I had a question the other day, or I had a, actually, let's, I had a guess the other day that, um, you know, teaches Forex, he trades Forex and he's a Forex consultant. I, I, I dabbled a little bit in Forex, but I didn't really know that much about it. And so, you know, after our chat, I jumped on the internet, I had a bit of a look, I downloaded some eBooks just to learn more because I found it interesting to learn something new. So it's about testing what works for you within your group. So let's have a look. Now with posts and spam, yeah, it just all comes back to the links. If you're posting in regards to your own business or you're posting links that have, you know, spam in them, it takes you off of Facebook, it's not gonna work well. So I definitely recommend if you can, um, yeah, either dropping your links in the comment section or getting a getting a, you know out there for a while, getting some engagement, and then later on editing the post to put the link in. Um, now with Facebook Lives, I think that that's been one of the biggest driving forces for growing this group. Uh, I've done a Facebook Live every day for I think almost three weeks, two or three weeks. Don't quote me on that, <laughs> but I think that's been one of the biggest growth hacks for this group, simply because Facebook is becoming more and more of a video platform. So they really want as much video content on Facebook as possible. And then doing a Facebook Live is even better. So the fact it's live is so much more engaging because when someone is watching a live, it'll pop up on your newsfeed saying, um, say, uh, I don't know, like uh, Amanda is watching, you know, this from this, uh, you know, X from, from Y, or, you know, Ross is uh, currently on a live in, you know, X group from, you know, and Y post or whatever it is. So, you know, live is really, really helpful in growing a group or a business page or whatever else. So, I mean, there's been a few days like yesterday, New Year's Day for me, because for, for everyone's central time, I know this is New Year's Day right now. For me, it's January 2nd, because I'm in Australia. I was really hung over yesterday, and I that's why I didn't schedule a podcast, because I didn't, out of respect, I didn't want to be hung over interviewing a guest. Um, and so I waited, I think it was till like 11 o'clock at night, and I did a, a 50 second video, it's just like, hey, you know, happy new year. Um, tomorrow we're doing a live training on group growth, and that's all it was. So I still did the live um, to keep the algorithm going. It, it wasn't really of any real value, but I guess it was promoting this live training today, but it was more just about keeping that going. So every day I'm doing a live post, and that's one thing with the Amanda year, you definitely do need to start doing Facebook lives. I'd recommend it 100%, you know, and even if it's one a week, one a fortnight, it doesn't matter. Like, and it's about practice. It's getting in front of the camera. Uh, I did a post recently because we had one of our valued community members ask, well, how do you get better in front of camera or how do you get more comfortable in front of the camera? Uh, and I said to him, you know, I'm no expert in that. I've, I've only had this group about two months, but it's about practice. So even if you're behind a camera and you're at home and you're filming yourself on video and then you're deleting it afterwards on your phone, that's fine. It's getting used to being behind a camera. And then you can then start stepping up to doing, say, Facebook Lives or doing a video and then uploading that onto Facebook and, and getting more comfortable that way. And then you can really um, you know, rate yourself and say, okay, well, I liked what I did there. The lighting wasn't great. I've got to change this. Or uh, I tended to say this word, like I said, like too much, or you know, uh, I said um too much or whatever else. Just really evaluate yourself. And then you can start building up to the Facebook Lives so, you know, I'm quite comfortable behind the camera. As you can see, you know, it's a pretty dodgy setup in regards to I'm clearly in my living room. That's Winton, the uh, house mascot. <laughs> but it's just about practicing as much as you can. And then when you're comfortable, then start doing the Facebook Lives. But that's if you're comfortable doing it. If Facebook Lives aren't for you, don't feel that you absolutely have to do them to grow your business or grow your group. Make sure you're comfortable doing it. If you prefer to do blog posts, then write the shit out of those blog posts and make them spectacular and then make that your value that you're offering others. You don't have to do Facebook Lives. It's just for the algorithms, yes, it does help in regards to organic growth. And yes, I found that that's worked really well for growing my group and you know our group as a community. 
but you don't have to do Facebook Lives if you don't feel comfortable doing them. So certainly practice makes perfect. Practice a few times on your phone, at home, without recording you know, anything live. Just do it, delete it. And then after a while, if you feel comfortable enough to upload videos, do that. Because if you scroll down in this group, in the NEC group, you'll see that at the very beginning, back in November, at first, it was just videos up as uploading. You know, there, there weren't any live posts. It was just videos, videos and, you know, blogs. And then over time, I started doing Facebook Lives. I thought, okay, well, I'm enjoying this. Uh, and then I started the podcast, the Online Footprint Project. And I thought, well, this is really enjoyable. And the fact this is live as well, this is not only ticking the box that it's a live video, but I'm also getting some value shared to others, you know, within the community. So there's two things. And then the third was I'm practicing being behind a camera, which I enjoy doing. Um, you know, it's certainly new to me. I've, I've done different things. Like when I was a kid, I did acting lessons for like six months or something, but it kind of just fizzled out and that was the last I thought of it. So it's more just about being comfortable if you want to do that. So uh, yeah, absolutely. I'd recommend if you can do the Facebook lives, then do them even if it's once a week, once a fortnight, whatever it may be. Um, now we had one question from Katie Sullivan and it was about getting the group noticed, you know, in regard to posting valuable content. Um, and, uh, you know, she had a few more questions we'll touch base on as well, but Posting valuable content, so that's really something, it's subjective, so it doesn't necessarily mean that if you give a post, it's gonna be perceived as valuable or you know, it's not valuable. It's all about what's going on around you. So if you've got a group, and just say coming back to the whole spam groups of just advertise your business, that's just bam, bam, bam. If you do a post that says, oh, you know, if you wanna know more about um, you know, writing a blog and how to articulate it better, and you do it in there, it may not necessarily be received as well because everyone there is just posting links. No one's writing blogs within that group. Or say within this group here, uh, I'm going to the effort of actually writing blogs for everyone to offer value in one way or another. So in that regard, for this space, it's gonna work a lot better and be received a lot better as value because those that are within this community enjoy reading blogs to a degree. I mean, not everyone does, and that's why I try to change it up, do some videos, some blogs, um, different things. But my point is, is that you wanna really make sure that the space that you're setting your content or value is within the right space. Because you really wanna be making sure that you're utilizing your time best. Because I'm you know, always asking for feedback. You know, Are you enjoying this podcast episode? Are you enjoying this live training? Um, did you read this blog? If so, let me know. You know mention arrow, <laughs> mention down. So I want to know that I'm doing the right things for you because if I'm not, I can absolutely leverage my time differently and offer value in other ways because it's you know I'm not a one-stop shop. It's not I only know how to do Facebook Lives or I don't only know how to do blog posts. So I want to make sure because I respect my time so much and I respect your time just as much as I respect mine. So I want to make sure that I'm utilizing my time best to give you as much value as possible. So it's really a case of in your own space, make sure you're offering the right type of post, um, you know, the, the correct narrative. So, you know, if, if you have a group and it's about social media marketing, then absolutely offer value about social media marketing. Uh, no one really cares about, well, you know, what's the best way to, I don't know, um, you know, cook a loaf of bread. If you put that in a social media marketing uh, group, no one's going to read it, or some might, as you know, it's because it's such an arbitrary post. But for the most part, no one's going to be interested in that because it's not the right space to post that content. Um, so, you know, that's really what I would say. Whereas, um, in regards to, say, Katie's other question, how far in advance do I write content? Well, it comes down to how much time you've got and what you want to do. Like, I'm really bad in that regards that I should be doing it, say, like a week in advance, and then you can set it so it posts at different times of the week or whatever. But I haven't done that yet. Um, and when the group starts to grow and you know my time becomes even more constrained, then I will absolutely start doing that. But for now, all I've really been doing is very impulsively, when it comes to me, I'll do a quick blog post because I think, oh, that's a great thing to write about. I'm gonna write about that. Or uh, you know, I've got, uh, say, a guest coming up for whatever and I wanna do a post around uh, the guest's topic. So yeah, I'm very impulsive in that regard, but I would definitely recommend um, you know, doing, I guess it's a little hypocritical, but you know, I'd recommend to actually post in advance and then schedule it. So that's something that I need to personally work on as well. Um, now uh, let's have a look. So with uh, spams, Facebook Live, now another massive driving force that I found was asking your audience for engagement. You know, asking your audience to actually say, hey, you know, I'd love to hear from you. That's something that's I've touched on already at the moment, you know, within this training but also asking them to add other members because 
in um, you know just before Christmas, about a week before Christmas, I said, oh, I'd love for us to hit 500 members. You know, let's play a game. Who doesn't like games? If you know anyone that wants to join this group uh, because you think they'll gain value from it, or they might want to be on the podcast or something like that, please add them to the group. And then I did a Facebook Live with someone who, the Forex uh, trader that I was discussing before, and in one hour after the Facebook Live, after I jumped off, I actually had 80 new members. We had 80 new members within the community added to the group, so that was phenomenal. So I was so just um, appreciative of everyone. So after I asked for our members within the community to add their friends to the group, then it shot up, it skyrocketed. So every day now I'm gaining more and more. So I thought by New Year's we were gonna have 500 group members, whereas we just hit 620, uh, and it's you know it's January 2nd for me, so that's phenomenal. So this morning I woke up, I had 20 new um, group member requests. Yesterday I think it was like 14, the day before was, yeah, something like 10 or 11 or whatever. So it is growing each day. So. I've set myself a goal by the end of the year, I wanna have 8,000 8, group members, which I know is a massive ask, but the fact that I'm figuring out how to grow a group and then I'm scaling that, I think I'm gonna be able to achieve that. And I think we as a community are gonna be able to achieve that. So you know, if there's anyone that you know that thinks we'll get value from videos like this or might enjoy the podcast or might actually you know, wanna be on the podcast to share their story and promote their business, then please add them to the groups and then that way we can all learn from one another within that community. Nikki says, I feel like I'm talking to the future while well, January 2nd. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So, you know, I've got my DeLorean um, and, you know, I'll travel back in time. <laughs> um, but yeah, it's, it's um, about, yeah, a few hours ahead. So it's a case of, you know, for everyone, I know it's January 1st and I figured, well, that's why I'll do this January 2nd because most people are going to be, you know, maybe a little seedy or hungover. I figure 8 p.m. is late enough that you've at least crawled out of bed and, and uh, you've, you've had a bit done with your day. <laughs> Whereas yeah, yesterday when I did a post, uh, Facebook Live, it was less than a minute. And I did it at like 11 p.m. at night just because I was just just lying in bed the whole day. <laughs> Great, Scott. <laughs> exactly, Nikki. Great movie. I actually watched um, watched all three a few months ago. And yeah, it just brought back so much nostalgia. I'm a big fan of uh, Back to the Future. Um, I just saw Jumanji as well, uh, the new one with The Rock and Kevin Hart. I, I, I love Kevin Hart, he's so funny. So I think Kevin Hart made that film like himself, I, like, as in he made the film like because of how funny he was. I've been trying to find the old Jumanji, so I think I might just have to buy it because it's not on Netflix. I know it's on Stan, but I don't have Stan, so I'm gonna have to figure that out. But yeah, it's I definitely recommend you. If you haven't seen Jumanji and you like uh, old nostalgic movies, then yeah, this is definitely a great take on it, because usually when they do a remake of a film, it's not that great. Um, but yeah, in this case, I was a big fan, so. <laughs> you know, I tend to, as you can see, I tend to waffle on a little bit around random things, but coming back to the uh, the group growth training. <laughs> um, yeah, certainly just asking members to add other members or other friends from their network to your group. Um, well, funnily enough, Nikki, with Pirate Bay in Australia here, the internet provider that I have, they voluntarily blocked certain um, website. So, I mean, you can get around it. I can buy a VPN, that sort of thing. I haven't gotten around to it. Um, but yeah, so it's become a little bit more challenging. So for the torrent sites I've been having a look at, not that I'm saying I download illegal films, <laughs> but um, it's more a case of, yeah, the, uh, our internet provider has actually blocked certain sites. So we have had limited, um, <laughs> we have had a certain, uh, yeah, websites that we can't visit. Um, but yeah, so in regards to asking, that's really something that's going to be so important as well because it's if you can, if you have say uh, one friend and they've got five friends that they think will gain value from your group, asking that one friend, they're then leveraging five other people, so that's going to work really well. And it's similar with uh, my web design business where I build websites for a living, but I also have an affiliate program where I offer 35% referral commissions for anyone that brings me business and the sale goes through. So then I'm helping other people leverage their network to monetize even further. So it all comes back to about being smart with your time and, and helping others um, you know, invest their time in synonymously helping you both. Because you know, in regards to the web design, I'm giving them cash for anyone they bring me and the sale goes through and then I build the website for them. Um, and in this group, anyone that brings community members within this group, they're then getting more value throughout their day. You know, They're now being able to uh, ask questions in regards to, well, what about this? Um, and what about that? 
one of our group members, I, I asked him, I said, well, what industry are you in? And he said, and he said, well, I'm trying to build my own platform. And I said, well, no worries, leave it with me. I'll see if I can find someone to come on the podcast that has experience and knowledge within your industry in regards to building platforms. So that's exactly what I did. I found someone, I put up a post in another group asking, oh, do you know about X, Y, and Z? Someone said, yeah, I do. I thought, awesome, thank you so much. Would you like to be on a podcast to not only share your story and promote your business, but we've had a few group members asking about X, Y, and Z. Would you be able to answer that for them within the group? So, you know, if you're adding friends to this group and you're in a certain industry or they're in a certain industry and they wanna know more about different parts of industry, then you know, reach out to me and I will do my best to try and find industry leaders to answer those questions for you within the podcast. So it's all about collectively working together and learning from each other as best we can. And I think that out of all the points I've mentioned today, just genuinely caring about how to help everyone within the group, I think that's been the strongest, absolute strongest point in regards to how to grow the group. Um, there's been some, you know, other great points I've mentioned, um, not to blow my own horn, but I mean, just in regards to, you know, what's worked well for me, but I think genuinely caring is the number one thing that you got to do because if you're growing a good group simply to monetize from the group, it's not going to go well, um, especially if you are, you know, starting a group and you're already posting links about your business or about blogs or whatever else. I find that posting blog links aren't very receptive. So personally, I don't do it. Uh, if anyone within the group does post um, and they've got a, a blog link in there. I really do appreciate you, you know, trying to contribute to the group, but most of the time they will get, um, you know, deleted just because uh, the engagement isn't very high. And we're trying to keep this as, uh, you know, a, a link-free group as such. I mean, every Thursday or, or Wednesday, um, you know, in uh, US time, uh, Nikki. So you know, come back to the whole, you know, back in time sort of thing. <laughs> but typically on a Wednesday, uh, on a Thursday, my time, Wednesday, your time, we'll do the, uh, you know, promote yourself post, and it's everyone can post their links because everyone still likes to share what they do and promote their business. So it's still very helpful to, to get links within your group, but limit when they are done. It's not just a case of randomly, you know, every day or two, someone will post a link saying, hey, here's my business, because that's gonna really not work that well in regards to, um, you know, your group and, and uh, the quality of, of posts in there. So really it's something that, you know, limit the posts as much as you can. Um, now let's have a look. So Rob uh, had a great question before and it was in regards to open or closed groups. Now, as I said, you know, I'm, I'm no expert. It's purely just from uh, my own, what I've learned from this. Now, Amanda said the 80-20 rule, 80% value bombs, helping people and 20% or less selling something. Amanda, I'll 100% agree with you on that, but I will add to it that I'd recommend for a little while, for long-term strategy, 100% offering value for a while and then make it 80 20. Because if it's 80 20, um, you know, and, and it all comes back to leveraging and, and, you know, what's working well. So when I first started the group, I was doing that. I was doing 80 20. I was, you know, because I'm building a course in regards to how to leverage your, your day or your week using a virtual assistant to how to free up time so that way you can basically utilize and leverage someone else's time so you can focus on business development while they do their you know, day to day Monday task or whatever else. So I was offering a lot of value, but then I was doing videos saying, oh, hey, you know, this, this course is launching soon. I'll still offer value here, but you know, at the same time I'm pitching the course. And I found that that wasn't well received. Um, so yeah, I'd 100% recommend still do the 80-20 rule, but at first offer value, value, value for a little while, uh, whether it's a few months or, or however long, and then jump to 80-20. So then it's still offering 80% value, but then 20% you're selling or offering or whatever else. So you know that that's a little tweak there, and I you know think that's a fantastic point to make. So thank you, Amanda, for that. Um, but yeah, so Rob had a question about open or closed groups, and I started because I had done almost no research on groups when I did start the NEC group. However, I had read one point that stuck with me. So the reason I made this a closed group even from day one was just that if you have an open group, everyone can see the post within that. Um, so what I mean by that is because everyone can see the posts, there's a lot more lingerers and not enough engagement or there's less engagement because someone will read the post and they'll kind of leave it there. Um, whereas you know, with a closed group, not only do you have to basically filter who's coming into the group so you know it's the right type of person for your group, but it's only those people that are gonna see the post. So, you know, it's it's really, yeah, uh, Amanda says open groups are awful. Yeah, because if you have a group and, you know, someone's made, say, a comment or a controversial post or something like that, people from 
all sorts of woodwork, you know, trolls and whatever else are going to jump on and start commenting or, you know, people are going to just start posting um, spam and spam uh, really is the last thing you want. So, you know, spam really is something that we want to try and avoid as much as possible. Uh, and then it says, when open group, there's no reason to join because people can see all the posts and it makes people not want to comment and engage because their friends and family can see what they're doing. Exactly. So, you know, that's why closed groups are fantastic in that you can really be yourself, you know, without anyone judging you because you can really just, everyone's got preconceived conceptions about um, who you are and, and, you know, where you are in your business and all this. And, you know, if you're asking a certain question, um, and everyone around you thinks you're here, but this question makes it sound like you're down here. You may feel that, I mean, everyone's going to take that negatively. Um, so, you know, if you're in a closed group, you can really be yourself. Um, and I guess that was another reason why I initially did the whole closed group thing. It was just that I didn't really want, it, it was hard to say, I didn't really want my family and friends knowing what I'm doing. I, I guess just from the fact it was more, you know, I'm, I'm always trying new things. And, and with this podcast, I wanted to at least get off the ground a little bit because I didn't want it to be like, oh, Ross is doing, you know, another business. Like what's this business he's got going now? Like he's always got something going. Whereas if I actually establish it and then get it going and then from there say, hey, I've got a podcast, it's going to be a lot more well received and like, oh, okay. Yeah. So he's actually, you know, he's got this going. Um, because, you know, if, if you can be yourself, it's, it's fantastic. Like you can really be genuine and as open as possible, um, especially for business. You know, um, how do I get high prices from a client? Yeah, great question there. So, you know, oh, great point, Amanda. So, you know, if you're asking in a group, how do I get high prices from a client? But then on your personal Facebook page, you've got heaps of potential clients. Well, that's not going to work out very well for you at all um, because they're going to then read that and say, oh, well, you know, they're just trying to extract more money from us or, um, you know, I don't want to work with this person because they're just trying to charge more. But the reality is, as a business owner, as you grow within your business, you have to keep charging more because your time becomes more limited. So you have to charge more to be able to basically just get everything going in the, in, in the same amount of limited space you have in a day. So, you know, it's very common as a business owner from that perspective to charge more each year or whatever else. Uh, for instance, you know, January you know, 1st of this year, my, my prices went up as well. Um, for web design and that's purely just because my time is becoming more and more limited especially with the podcast for instance it's 25 hours just for January I've now lost in regards to you know working on the web design business and it's certainly not a loss I think it's a, a fantastic investment because I'm learning something new every day from the podcast members and everyone within the group is now learning something new from and different perspectives from others so you know certainly an investment it's not a loss of time but it is detracting from my web design business. So there's 25 hours now that I've essentially leveraged elsewhere. So it would make sense for me to now increase my prices in January because I've lost 25 hours, so I need to make that up somewhere else. So yeah, if, if clients do see on your personal page, you're asking in a group, or how do I charge more to clients, or I had this bad client that, you know, this happened or that happened, how do I handle this, or how do I handle this objection? And that potential client or that client sees that post and they're like, hang on a minute, that person's talking about me in a group. Like, I don't appreciate that at all. That at all. I'm now going to pull the plug on this um, you know, relationship. So, you know, being in a closed group, there's so many benefits to it. And the privacy is one of the biggest ones. Privacy and spam, really the two biggest ones that I would say um, are, you know, the reason why to have a closed group. Uh, now let's have a look. So yeah, face to face or online. So early we had a question about you know is it better to grow your group through face to face or online? Um, and for myself, and and this is purely just um, you know personal experience, I found online has been ninety nine percent of where I've grown my group. I say ninety nine point eight percent. You know the the actual the people I've met or people I know in person, I could count on one hand that are in this group. You know, I'm 620, that, that's a big deal. Like, you know, so I've made a lot of online friends uh, that we chat pretty regularly, um, you know, like Amanda, for instance. But at the same time, it's, you know, it's all been online that I've been doing. So, um, however, you know, face-to-face -face is, is still good. You know, if you can do it, if you're networking, the, the podcast thing is, you know, something that I can leverage in person. Uh, the other day, I had a guest come on and just before we started, I knocked over one of my lights and the glass shattered everywhere. And I thought, shit, like, you know, I'm, you know, I've got glass now everywhere, all over my feet. Um, not literally on my feet, but just surrounding me. 
but the show was just about to start, so I didn't want our guests to be late. So what I did was I just um, put some shoes on and then I did the show anyway, just sitting in the class, uh, not literally in it, but it was all around my feet. And then when I went to Bunnings, uh, Mitre 10, uh, whatever you guys have in regards to hardware stores, and I bought more lights, the guy said, oh, well, what are these for? And I said, oh, it's, um, you know, I've got lighting that I knocked over. And he's like, oh, cool, you know, what, what's it for? Like, you're taking photographs? So I was like, no, it's actually for a video podcast I've started. And he's like, oh, that's lovely, you know, that's fantastic. I'd love to, you know, see that. So he gave me a pen and a piece of paper. I wrote down uh, the NEC group's name, and I said, you know, just search Facebook groups for niche entrepreneurial community. Uh, and he's like, yep, cool, I'd love to have a look. So, you know, that was an example of in person I've promoted the group, whereas, yeah, 99% of the time I am doing it via the internet. Uh, and then other platforms are great for promoting the group as well. So predominantly, Facebook is where I'm finding members. You know, I'm spending a lot of my time on Facebook to do this. However, I've done a little bit in other platforms. So like Instagram, for instance, uh, using hashtags, I've been posting. Now, because this knowing full well that promoting a Facebook group or promoting a podcast, especially in its earliest stages, is going to get minimal engagement, I didn't post it on my personal Instagram account. So RossMac88 is my, um, you know, my personal brand Instagram. However, I didn't post it on there because I knew that, you know, from all my other posts of, you know, 300, 500 likes, whatever it is, I knew I'd only get like 20 or 30 or whatever it is. So I didn't want that on there. So what I did, I created an entire new uh, account called, uh, I think it's like Niche Entrepreneur or Niche Entrepreneurs or something like that. Uh, and what I started doing was posting and then doing hashtags like hashtag podcast um, and then you know all these different hashtags with research so that way I could actively promote the Facebook group on Instagram without it um, you know hurting my personal brand in that way and I mean sure like you know everyone that I've got on Instagram would love to know that I'm doing a podcast but I don't feel it's at the point yet that I can say oh look podcast episodes coming up and then 500 people will be like yep cool let's go to it so from that purely from an engagement perspective I started a whole new Instagram account and then I used that to advertise the group further uh, and advertise the podcast further. Uh, and once again, that was completely free. So I didn't spend any money on um, doing you know, any ads through Facebook or Instagram. I am gonna start looking into spending money on promoting the group further because I wanna start getting a sponsorship for the podcast pretty soon. Um, and so because of that, I need obviously more group members and more people subscribing to the podcast. Um, Amanda says, I feel like I'm too much of a spaz to actually uh, make the ask to get people to come to my group. I don't want to make it awkward for any of my friends if they don't want to join. Um, no, Amanda, look, I completely appreciate that and I can completely understand that. Like, you, you really don't want to feel as if you're putting your friends in an awkward position saying, hey, you know, could you please join my group? I completely understand that and I, you know, totally respect that. And I feel the same way. And, and that's why when I do ask those you know to join the group I'm doing it in a, such a soft way like the first few weeks I was trying to figure out what worked and I was kind of a bit spammy in regards to uh, getting people to join and I realized that that's not really a way to go like it's kind of a douchey way to go so I've, I've now stopped doing that um, however oh well I mean as much as you say it's a tactic that works for 99% of people it, it really sure but I mean you know it's a question of well would you rather have a thousand people that are uh, you know super engaged and you know they're actually a great part of the community and they're all appreciated or would you rather have 10,000 people that don't engage much they'll periodically just spam they're not interested in what you have to say so you know it's it's a numbers game but it's about getting the right numbers so just because it's working for say 99% of people although that's an arbitrary number just say it's working for a large group of people doesn't necessarily mean that that's the best way to do it so you know if you want friends to join Find why they should join, you know, find that out. Like, take a step back and say, okay, well, this is a group I've got. I know I can offer fantastic value, but then it becomes, well, why should they join, you know? And it all comes down to the why. So if you can figure out for them why they should join your group, then absolutely do so. So if, uh, Amanda, if they've said, oh, you know, I, I wanna know more about web design, so well, great, I've built this, you know, group, I'm offering heaps of value in regards to web design points or WordPress points or whatever it may be, and then you can say, well, you know, would you like to join my group? I'd love to invite you because uh, you, I saw, you know, or let's say it's someone you don't know, and they've left a question in the MEC group or wherever else, and you've, you know, messaged them and say, oh, hey, uh, you know, I saw your question, 
Um, I'd love to answer it for you, blah, blah, blah. And they've said, oh, thank you so much for that. And you can always be like, well, and at the same time, if you would like more help or more tips on web design, I've actually created this group that I'd love to invite you to join. And then that way, it hasn't been a spammy ad. Uh, you've warmed them up to the idea, the fact you've already provided value just through a Facebook message. You've then said, hey, you know, would you be interested in joining my group or I'd love to invite you to my group and then just drop the link within the message and then it's up to them to join. So if you're unsure how to get a URL for a group, what I'll do is not on the Facebook app itself, but whether you're on Safari, you know, on the actual internet or if you're on a desktop, find your group and then the URL itself at the top, the www, copy and paste that into the message and that's the domain URL. So that's really what you want to be doing in regards to um, you know, posting that because if you just said, oh, search for my group name is in the niche entrepreneur community, people are lazy, they're not going to search for that. Whereas if you say, oh, I'd love to invite you to my group, here's the link and then it's posted right there. All they have to do is click and then click invite. So it's much easier for them. It's a smoother transition getting them into the group. Now, in regards to little things like group names, although it's it's great, you know, if you've got a really niche name and it's really just fun or whatever else, that's great. But for searching via Facebook, until you've got such a super high number, you're actually better off having much more generic, almost boring names. You know, it doesn't have to be boring, but have them just super generic. So, uh, for instance, I had initially this group was called the Startup um, Entrepreneur Club. And I thought, well, you know, psychology behind it, everyone likes to be a part of a club, you know, and, uh, you know, it's predominantly for those that are, you know, in the startup phase. But then I thought, well, how many people are actually searching the word startup on Facebook? And then in addition to that, as this group grows and we're all progressing within our own businesses, well, no long, these people aren't going to be in the startup phase anymore. So they may feel that they're no longer going to get value within this group. So I then changed it to the niche entrepreneur community because I don't want this to just be about startups. I want this to be about everyone in all levels of business. And that's why on the podcast, for instance, we've got entrepreneurs and business owners from all walks of life and all levels of business because it's not just about you know the super successful ones. We've had some that have you know just started out um, or not started out, but as in there you know one to three years within their business and they can still provide value. So you know with the fact it's the niche entrepreneur community more people are gonna search the word entrepreneur um, than say startup for instance. Uh, and community I find that because I want this to really be a really engaging family, a really engaging community where we all help one another, I feel community really sets that that frame, that tone because if I just said uh, niche entrepreneurs, um, you know, club or whatever else, it's like, well, a club is kind of as if, you know, you're, you're joining just to, to get something back. Whereas in a community, it's all that giving and taking. So. You know, if you can have more of a, a generic name for search criteria, I think that's gonna work a lot better for you to getting people uh, organically into your group. And in regards to getting Facebook to share in your group more, we've certainly touched on comments and posts and engagement and all that sort of thing. But when you are, say, on the Facebook wall or you're in another group, it may come up with recommended groups. Uh, and once you're starting to get more people joining your group and more engagement, that's when your group is gonna start getting shown in that little banner. And it's not gonna be every single day, but if you have a friend that's just joined a group, like the NEC group here, then it may then come up recommended for their friends. So the more people you can get to join your group organically, the more Facebook is gonna show your group to other people. So it all comes down to just a roller, um, you know, just a, a snowball effect as such. It's once you start to get people joining your group, it's gonna become uh, larger and larger in regards to more and more are gonna join. And then if you ask those people to then add their friends, that's gonna join um, or grow even further because more and more are gonna grow. So I think there's some, some good points to take notes on. Um, what else? So the, the other thing was we had a question before live, question about paid ads. And um, you know it's something that I personally haven't done yet. Uh, so I'm not in a position to really give that much on it. However, I have read that that can be really helpful and I am looking into it in regards to research. So I will be doing paid ads soon to grow this group further. Uh, so it's just a case of figuring out what works best for you. So that way you know that you're investing your money in the right space um, and you're not able to do group URL posts uh, within your or links within your post. However, if you use like a bit.ly URL or something like that, that will kind of be a little way to hack that. Uh, or if you want to just promote your Facebook business page or your personal brand page, 
And then when people click on it and go to that page, you've then got an ad for your group saying join here. That's another way to do it. So I hope that this has been really helpful. Um, I've basically just been trying to give as many points that I can think of in regards to what I've done to grow this group from zero to 620 members in only two months. Two months and I think one day. <laughs> so if you got value from that, just so I know to make more live trainings like this in the future, please let me know. Please let me know that you actually had value. If you could type in hashtag value, I would absolutely love to hear from you to know that you did get value from this because I'm a big believer in offering the right kind of value. So if this wasn't something that was for you and you feel that you would get better value from me, say writing a blog post or doing more podcasts, I'd love to know so that way I can utilize my time better to offer you more value. So if you did enjoy this video and you do feel that you got some information from it, thanks Amanda. Yeah, so hashtag value, I'd love to hear from you. Um, if you're on the replay as well, uh, just so I know that you have watched it at some point in case you have any questions in the future or someone types a question in this and you want to be notified about it later so I can answer that. Hashtag Team R is in letter R for replay. Love to hear from you there. So hashtag Team R would be fantastic. So just to kind of cover all the points again, because um, this is I've kind of been free, you know, free spacing it in regards to all the points. Probably won't be able to touch on all of them, but having a look, you know, what's your niche? Uh, as in regards to what do you want the group to achieve, uh, what do you want the group to have in it, figure that out. Uh, I think that's going to be really helpful. Uh, group etiquette, adding friends, don't be douchey about it. Uh, cold adding people to your group isn't going to work well. Uh, if you spam people with messages um, and links, Facebook will put you in the sin bin and then you won't be able to message anyone for about a week. Um, you'll have to only be able, you can only message friends. So I learned that the hard way. Uh, I never realized that that was a thing. Um, so that was another reason why I then pivoted to start, you know, offering more uh, conversational pieces before sending the link. So yeah, if you're gonna just spam people link posts, don't do it. Um, a friend of mine tried it on LinkedIn and after I think he said like 10 messages or something, LinkedIn actually banned him from, from sending messages altogether. Um, so yeah, just be very wary of that. Uh, what else? Um, where to promote? So in other groups, uh, I found that the personal touch of one-on-one -on -one is a great way to promote your business. Uh, however, there are some uh, promotional uh, posts within other groups where they'll say, oh, hey, you know, if you uh, have a business and you'd like to recommend uh, to others, please post below. They're normally good paces to say, oh, I've got a group that I'd love you to join. Um, ideally, sometimes someone will do a post in their group and say, what's your group? You know, comment below and then you can do that. So that's ideal. So that's somewhere that you're doing it, um, you know, and you're respecting that they're, um, you know, putting specific areas for you to post that in. So, you know, it's all about respect because you want your community to be filled with people that you appreciate and they appreciate you and, and you'll respect one another. So, um, you know, when I posted in a, you know, advertise your business post saying join my group, sure, I got some people joining, but then I looked at my, um, you know, pending approved posts and I had heaps of spam posts about people's businesses. So they were deleted, they were blocked. They weren't the right fit for this group. Uh, what else? Um, Test what works with engagement. If you're putting posts and it's got blog links or uh, URLs off of Facebook, the organic reach isn't gonna be as high because Facebook wants you to stay on Facebook. Um, and Facebook is really becoming more of a video platform. They want you to be able to post videos. So uploading videos or doing Facebook Lives is gonna be really well, uh, work well for you in regards to the organic reach. So you know, if you can do Facebook Lives, do them, but only if you feel comfortable doing them because if you don't feel comfortable doing them, videos aren't for you. Don't feel that's the end of the world. Don't do them just because I've told you to do them. If you feel more comfortable writing blogs, write blogs, make your group about blogs, but make sure you write the shit out of those blogs so that way you know that you're writing a value that's well received because you wanna make sure that any time you're investing into your group is gonna be received by others positively. You don't wanna just be posting stuff for the sake of posting it and not evaluating it to see if it's gonna work for you or not. Um, what else? Ask, so ask your friends to join the group. So if you know anyone that you think would gain value from this video uh, or would gain value from listening to podcasts about successful entrepreneurs from around the world, please add them to the group because I'd love to meet your friends, grow my network, help you grow your network, help grow their network. So if there's anyone you know that you think that they might even you know, get some value from this, please add them to the group and I'd appreciate that so much. You'd be doing me a massive favor and you'd be doing the rest of the community here a huge favor as well. So thank you for the consideration of uh, you know, adding others to the group. 
Um, what else? So yeah, paid. As I said, you know, I'm going to um, you know do a bit of research on that. I've heard it's great to do, um, but I haven't done it myself, so I don't feel I'm in a position to really offer too much value on that just yet. Because uh, as I said, I'm no expert on group growth. It's purely just these are the the things that I've noticed within the two months of, of growing the group to 620. Um, and then face to face or online, 99.9% .9 of the networking I've done was to grow this group was online. So that's uh, yeah, really what I'd recommend that worked well for me. If you have a big group in person that you think would work well, then absolutely you know get them on board. So thank you so much for investing your time with me today. I really appreciate you tuning in. Everyone that's jumped on, I really appreciate you so much. I genuinely thank you for being here with me today. I'd love to know if you did get value from this. Because if you did, then I would certainly want to do more live trainings in the future. So if you could type hashtag value just so I know you did get value from it, then I would absolutely love to continue doing trainings like this. Whereas if it's say more the podcast, I'll keep doing more like that. So um, thank you so much for everyone that has tuned in. I hope the sound's been okay. Uh, I'm doing it purely just from the phone. Most of my business is run from my phone. So I think that if you all do enjoy these type of live trainings and I'm going to have to invest in some proper camera videos. Um, but yeah, until then, thank you so much. And um, yeah, I'd love to hear from you. You know, if, if you're able to post, you know, some, some value here and there, maybe it's a small blog post or something like that from your industry without the links, because obviously, you know, we try to keep it a spam free group, then uh, yeah, I'd love to hear from you. So thank you so much. And uh, we'll, we'll keep in touch. Let's smash this new year. Uh, in regards to keeping accountable to your goals, as I said, I'm volunteering to be an accountability buddy. So if you do need someone to touch base with just to make sure that they're saying, you know, giving you a kick up the butt saying, well, you know, why haven't you done this? Or, you know, have you been on track for your goals? Then please, by all means, reach out to me through message or there is a public section here in this group where uh, I've mentioned it just so we can post our goals publicly so we can all keep track together. So really appreciate you for tuning in today. Thank you again for tuning in and, and uh, you know, giving me your time and investing your time in this. And uh, I look forward to hearing from you all soon. And uh, let's absolutely smash 2018.